Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, San and Nastaki. And in this video, we will discuss about storage efficiency in NetApp cluster mode. We will discuss what is storage efficiency, what are the types of storage efficiency available for NetApp cluster mode, and for each type, we will uh, discuss in details. But uh, first of all, before proceeding further, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And hit the bell icon so that whatever new video I upload in my channel, you will get a notification immediately. First, what is storage efficiency? So, storage efficiency is not NetApp specific uh, features, it's a features, or we can say it's a concept uh, which is applicable everywhere where storing of data is uh, involved so storage efficiency features ensures that there is no wastage of storage capacity and all disk capacity is used in efficient manner without impacting any performance storage administrator has to manage it by enabling and, and by monitoring various storage efficiency features these definitions will be more clear in coming slides now let's discuss what are the types of storage efficiency. There are four types of storage efficiency features available in NetApp cluster mode. Three, duplication, thin provisioning, compressions, and flex clone. In coming slides, we will discuss uh, more about these types of storage efficiency. So deduplication reduces the amount of physical storage required for a volume by discarding or removing duplicate blocks and updating the pointers to refer to a single block. So first let's uh, discuss about an example where deduplication is helpful. So suppose if you are sending a mail to 100 uh, users with an attachment, uh, every users will download that attachment and store it in share folder. So in this way, what happens that a single data or the single PDF file or the single attachment is kept in same share multiple times. So this is not a efficient way of storing the same data. So this is where deduplication features comes into picture. So what happens during the normal data writing process, each data block is assigned with a unique signature. With respect to the attachment that we are discussing, that attachment is divided or broken into many data blocks and each data blocks is stored in the disk with a unique signature. So when deduplication process starts, data on tap compares these signatures and remove all data blocks with same signature and keeps only one data block. And then on tap updates the pointer to point to that particular single data blocks instead of multiple data blocks for the same data. Let's see how deduplication works in terms of a image. So this is a image which uh, has data blocks before deduplications and after deduplication. So here you can see that each color represents the same data with different data blocks. So let's uh, take an example of this black color data block. So you can see here that uh, many blocks has black color. It means these are the same data which has been kept in different blocks. So after deduplication runs, what will happen that all these blocks will be removed and only a single block will be stored. And then the data on taps will points only to a single block. In this manner, duplicate data blocks are removed and the efficiency of uh, storing the same data is increased. Now the next storage efficiency feature is thin provisioning. So provisioning you may have heard of this terminology many times. So in case of thin provisioning, a volume or LUN will be created, but the storage will not be reserved in advanced. While creating a volume or a LUN, you can assign a storage capacity of 1 TB, but 1 TB will not be allocated in advance to that particular volume or LUN. Instead, storage is allocated dynamically as it is needed. It means whenever the user will start putting data in those volumes, actual space will be allocated to the volume from its containing aggregate. 
So free space is released back to the storage system when data in that volume or the LUN is deleted. Now thin provisioning supports over provisioning. It means if you have a 5 TB of aggregate, you can allocate 7 TB of volumes because there will be some users who will not be using the allocated storage completely, which in turn that capacity can be utilized by another users who actually need the space. In this way, the efficiency of uh, capacity provisioning is increased if we are using in provisioning. Now, the next feature is compression. So compression reduces the amount of physical storage required for a volume by combining data blocks in compression groups. It means that many data blocks will be added in a compression group and then each of these compression groups is stored as a single block. In turn, more data can be put in that particular volume. So there are two types of compressions available, inline compressions and post compression. So in case of inline compression, compression happens in the memory itself before the data is written to the disk. So inline compression uses the right performance. So you'll have to avoid this compression where you need right performance. Then comes post compression. So in this case, the compression happens after the data is written to the disk. Now the last feature is flex clone. So I have already discussed about flex clone in my previous videos and I have shown how to create a flex clone as well. So flex clone technology reference snapshot metadata to create writable and point in time copies of a volume. It means when you create a flex clone, whatever data is there at that point of time, all that data will be cloned to a different volume and the cloned volume is writable. So you can perform various testing on the cloned volume and if the testing is successful, then you can replace that cloned volume for production purpose. So Flex clone copies shares data blocks with their parents. Hence, it does not consume any extra storage except the metadata. As there is no consumption of any extra storage, the efficiency of uh, storing data in Flex clone increases. So you can split the flex clone to separate it from its parent volume. Once split operation is done, the volume will start consumes extra space from aggregate. So that's all for this video. Hope you understood the concept of storage efficiency and how it is useful for managing storage capacity. Once again, thank you for watching and subscribe to channel to get notification for more upcoming videos.